Hi everyone, uh, this is a video tutorial about standard precipitation index (SCPI). This YouTube video tutorial has two uh, parts. The first one is the theoretical description, and the second one is demonstration, which is which includes both Excel and R Studio. So. Uh, uh, there is a meteorological drought indices. Uh, there are many RAIN-based meteorological uh, drought indices like SCPI, the uh, DI, the Sile Index, uh, PN, percent of normal index, and uh, there is also rainfall and annual anomality uh, index, and they, uh, there is also effective drought index. So these indices are uh, RAIN-based meteorological drought indices. Uh, there are the other is uh, what is SCPI. The SCPI is uh, an abbreviation for standardized precipitation index, uh, which is a drought index. And uh, this index is first developed by uh, TB uh, Mikey according to 1993. So the standardized precipitation index SCPI expresses the actual rainfall as a standardized departure with respect to rainfall probability distribution function, and uh, hence the index has gained importance in uh, recent years as a potential drought indicator permitting. Uh, comparisons across uh, space and time. So this SCPI is expressed as standard deviations that uh, the observed precipitation would deviate from the long-term mean for a normal distribution and for a probability distribution for the actual precipitation record. This SCPI is uh, a widely used index to characterize meteorological drops on a range of various time scales. On short time scales, uh, the SCPI is closely related to soil moisture, uh, while uh, at a longer time scale, SCPI can be uh, related to stream flow, groundwater, and reservoir storage. So, this soil moisture uh, is uh, soil moisture condition is generally uh, agricultural indicates agricultural drought. So, this responds to precipitation anomalies at a short uh, time scale. That is uh, most probably this short uh, time scale ranges from one to uh, six months. This SCPI also quantifies observed precipitation as a standardized departure from a selected probability distribution function that models the uh, raw precipitation data. The raw precipitation data uh, are typically fitted to a gamma or either either a gamma or uh, a Pearson type 3 distribution and then transform it to a normal distribution because uh, this raw precipitation is not uh, normally distributed. So a uh, transformation is first applied then followed by uh, fitting to a normal distribution is needed. So the competitions of SCPI requires long-term uh, precipitation data, which is lo normally longer than 30 years is uh, desirable, uh, which is used to determine uh, the probability distribution function which is then transformed to uh, a normal distribution, uh, having a mean zero and standard deviation of one. This the positive SCPI values indicates greater than mean precipitation and negative values indicate uh, less than mean precipitation. The other is SCPI values. SCPI can be used for monitoring both dry and wet conditions. The drought category and SCPI ranges shown below for uh, extreme wet condition SCPI value should be greater than 2 and for uh, showing very wet conditions SCPI range from 1.9 to, to 1.5 for uh, showing moderately uh, wet conditions uh, SCPI ranges from 1.49 to, to 1 uh, so the other is from uh, 0.99 to negative 0.99 SCPI indicates new normal condition for uh, showing dry uh, drought categories. Uh, for moderately dry condition, SCPI ranges from 1, negative 1 to uh, negative 1.49. For indicating a severely uh, dry drought condition, SCPI ranges from negative 1.5 to negative 1.99 the other drought category is extremely dry condition for this scpi should be less than negative 2. a drought event starts uh, when scpi values reaches negative 1 and in this uh, when scpi becomes positive again the positive sum of scpi for all of all uh, the uh, months within a drought event is referred to as uh, drought magnitude the other steps for calculation uh, for this more detailed descriptions of uh, the steps required to calculate the SCPI is provided in uh, Lloyd Hacks and Saunders in 2002. So the calculation method comprised of a transformation of one frequency distribution that may be gamma or Pearson type 3 
to another uh, frequency distribution uh, which is normal distribution called might be uh, Gaussian distribution so the first step uh, is adequately choosing a particular uh, product distribution it might be gamma distribution incomplete beta distribution and present uh, type 3 distribution uh, which is uh, this chosen probability uh, distribution that reliably uh, fits the long-term precipitation time series and uh, conducts uh, fitting to that distribution uh, getman uh, 1999 suggests a piston uh, type 3 distribution over gamma distribution initially used by Marquis et al. Uh, 1993 and 1995 but uh, gamma distribution has been widely used as uh, the gamma distribution has been understood as a reliable fit to the precipitation distribution the fitting can be achieved through the maximum likelihood estimations of gamma distribution parameters the percentile values from this distribution probability distribution is then uh, transformed to the corresponding value in the new probability distribution. As a result, the probability that the rainfall is less than or equal to any rainfall amount will be the same as the probability that the new variate is less than or equal to the corresponding value of that rainfall amount. The other is uh, the normal distribution is usually used for this another transformation so uh, so that the mean and standard deviations of the CPI for a certain station in long-term period is zero and one respectively according to Edwards and Mackie 1997. The next step is calculating the mean and standard deviation. So the following equation uh, can be used uh, to determine both mean and standard deviation. After completing uh, calculating uh, mean and standard deviation, the next uh, step is uh, step three, which is uh, the precipitation uh, should be converted to uh, log normal values in uh, the uh, statistics of u and shape scale parameters of gamma distribution are computed so from this case uh, this is a log mean so the shape uh, parameter uh, beta and scale parameter alpha uh, should be uh, determined to uh, in order to use for uh, gamma distribution uh, make sure uh, this is the right uh, equation for uh, scale parameter and uh, shape parameter this one you have to check by yourself so in such a way you can uh, determine alpha and beta uh, the other step is uh, step four uh, these parameters alpha and beta are then used uh, to find the cumulative probability of an observed precipitation event the cumulative probability uh, or gamma function is given by is the following equation uh, since the gamma function is undefined for x is equals to zero and uh, precipitation distribution may contains uh, zeros uh, the quality uh, probability becomes uh, in the form of uh, h of x equation where q is the probability of zero the cumulative probability uh, h of x is then transformed to the standard normal random variable z with mean zero and variance of one uh, which is the value of SPI uh, following uh, Edward Semaki 1997. From this uh, route, uh, according to the SPI, starts when the SPI uh, value is equal to uh, one, negative 1 or below negative 1, and in this when the value becomes positive. The other is strings of SCPI. Uh, the first strings of SCPI is it's flexible. It can be uh, computed for multiple time scales. Uh, the other benefit is that it is simple to use due to SCPI is based uh, only on the rainfall. Uh, the second strings of SCPI is uh, its standardization, which uh, ensures that the frequency, the frequency of extreme events at any location in the on any time scale is consistent the other things of a cpi is that variable time scale which is helpful for the uh, analysis of drought dynamics especially the determinations of onset and the cessation which have always been difficult to track with other indexes according to angelis ital thousand the other strings of a cpi is that shorter time scales of a cpi uh, for example one to two uh, six a cpi means uh, cpis uh, can provide early warning of drought and help us Drought severity. The other thing is uh, it is partially consistent, which means it allows for comparisons between different locations in different climates. The other final strings of SCPI is that its probabilistic nature gives its historical context, which is well suited for decision making. Then finally, weakness of SCPI. The first weakness of SCPI is that the assumption that a suitable theoretical probability distribution can be uh, found to model the raw precipitation data. This distribution could give a different result. The other weakness of SCPI is that uh, the standardized nature of the index itself, which means the, CP the SCPI is not capable of identifying regions that may be or uh, more at drought-prone areas than others. Uh, equal value of SCPI at, do, uh, at two different 
the location does not necessarily imply equal water deficit at those two locations. The other weakness of ACPI is that when running the ACPI at shorter time scales, uh, two regions of uh, low uh, seasonal precipitation could uh, misleadingly give large positive or negative ACPI results. The other uh, is ACPI is based on uh, only on precipitation. The other is uh, no soil water uh, balance component. Thus, no ratio of evapotranspiration, potential evapotranspiration can be calculated. The last weakness of SCPI is that SCPI time scale interval shorter than one month and longer than 24 months may be unreliable. So this is all about for part one. Uh, I will show you the part to uh, how we can determine a CPI values using uh, Microsoft Excel and we could uh, we can use uh, also R Studio and we can use also a CPI calculator uh, software we can uh, we, uh, we will see these three softwares how we can determine this CPI values in part two thank you very much for uh, uh, watching my video thank you